Hi everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland. I, I'm in Cork at my aunt and uncle's again while they're away and I said I'd take this opportunity to do one of those uh, reading challenges which I re personally I really enjoy seeing on other people's channels which are to kind of see how much you can get read within a certain period of time. Um, I'm not going to do a 24 hour readathon because it is Sunday and I'm working tomorrow and I need my sleep but yeah I suppose it's uh, just 10 to 10 now so I said I would uh, see how much I could get read in 12 hours. The weather is promised really nice so I'd say I'll probably read a good bit outside and um, it's not promised as hot as yesterday. Yesterday was about like 31 degrees down here and I did go to the beach and it was lovely but um, yeah today I think it's going to be a little bit more overcast so I'm just going to stay at home and relax and read and I have nothing else to do really apart from just walk the dog which only takes about 20 minutes and uh, I have an audiobook that I can listen to while I'm doing that so other than that I'm just planning to just have a lovely relaxing reading time and I have uh, I have all my food prepared and everything so I'll be happy out. Um, so just an overview of the books that I am going to read. I'm in the middle of like three books at the moment which is maybe a, a bit many and probably I'm planning to be in the middle of at least one more to, by the time I finish today. So first of all the classic I'm currently reading A Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. A while back I kind of said I wanted to read one Victorian classic per month and this is my one for this month. Um, so the this was actually published in for the first time in a full volume in 1848, um, even though it's set in about 1810, I think. It's obviously set in the Regency period, and there's loads of mention of the Napoleonic Wars, uh, which I obviously like, as I enjoy reading about that period. I kind of love the way it's told. It's almost like a satire. It really is like you're with the narrator and in conversation with him, like following the characters around, which is really enjoyable. And he very much like intrudes on the story, like, you know, he'll defend characters actions you know like they can't help it what other option do they have that kind of thing so it kind of reminds me of Northanger Abbey almost in Jane Austen you know where she's kind of uh, commenting on what Catherine is doing um or what was the other one that reminded me of oh and very much kind of like uh, you know the adaptation the film adaptation of Anna Karenina um with Keira Knightley where it kind of all happens on a stage it is very much like that so yeah I'm really enjoying this it kind of the book starts off um with these two girls leaving their school they're both in kind of different financial circumstances Amelia is kind of set up as the perfect one she's from a well-off kind of merchant background and Rebecca Sharp or uh, Becky as the narrator always calls her she had to work a bit at the school to pay for her keep as well and she's from like a lower uh, background but they are kind of friends and uh, kind of how their lives go forward from then on I, I think ever I think it's known about Vanity Fair if you've heard about the Becky Sharp is the main character but like the author kind of pretends at the start that Amelia is the main character so uh, yeah no that that's quite fun Rebecca does take over the story so yeah I'm about so I'm 156 pages in of about 650 um, and at the point that's just happened, like they it kind of a turn has happened in both of their lives, um, which, you know, is sets things up really interestingly. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, not hoping to finish this today or anything, I, but because I, I, I do want to read other things. But I'd be happy, I think, if I got like 100 pages right and get to about 200, page 250 or something. So the other book I'm in the middle of at the moment is Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. I have this out of the library, so I do want to finish it. This is a strange book. I could tell it was kind of maybe fantasy kind of magical re realism from the blurb I didn't know how kind of weird it would be like a lot of things are kind of just left to you and not really explained like there's like talking dolls and like this this kind of land called uh, Druhastrana so I read the first chapter and I was like oh I don't know what I left it away for a while and then I was like there's actually one thing that did want to make me persevere in it and that's that the main character one of the main characters has celiac disease as a representation so anybody who doesn't know celiac disease is when you can't eat gluten it's something that i've been diagnosed with since i was about like eight and it's kind of a lot of people in my family have it yeah it's just i've never read a book by a character with celiac disease before in a book called gingerbread who'd have known it but uh, yeah, so that was just fun. So I think I will pers persevere with this book and it's not very long. And there's some parts of it that I am really loving, like, um, do you know, the relationship between uh, Perdita and her mother, uh, Harriet, and her grandmother, uh, Margot. Like, there's some parts of the book that are very, like, normal if kind of maybe exaggerated a bit like Harriet's trying to fit in with this kind of parental council at, at Perdita's school. I'll see whether I can get my head around the more fantastical bits and uh, yeah I think I'll be able to describe more what this book is about when I finish it especially if I just sit down and like read it today but when I've got my head around it more because I haven't read much fantasy recently and I'm just not used to it. 
So uh, yeah, that's Gingerbread. The other book I'm in the middle of is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, which I'm listening to an audiobook. I think I'm about halfway through and again, I'm enjoying it. I think it's great as an audiobook um, because it is so long and like the perspective changes. So you get the different narrators for the different characters. Um, like my my supposed purpose for being down here in Cork is walking uh, Paddy the dog. Um, so he's not around. <laughs> I think he's outside, otherwise I'd show him to you. So um, yeah, so I'll read that if I should bring him for a walk um, but he doesn't need a very long walk to be honest it's quite hot great circle if you haven't heard it already um it was nominated for the women's prize there's kind of two strands it follows this like a uh, female pilot i cannot think for a name i'm so bad to think of people's names when they're an audiobook that's why i prefer reading physical books it follows this female pilot back in the like early days like 1930s 1940s and there's also like a present day strand which follows an actress who's taking part in a film that is Marion Graves. It it also follows this actress who's uh, who's making a film about Marion Graves' life. Um, like most people, I think I do find the past story and with Marion much more interesting than the present day story story with Hadley. But um, yeah, like I suppose I always knew that'd be the case anyways with historical fiction, and I do love hearing about kind of the development of planes, uh, and I do love kind of hearing about the different milestones that were achieved by female pilots. Um, which is kind of interspersed throughout the chapters is like who made the first solo trip for a female across the Atlantic or do you know the, the great circle is when they like fly from like pole to pole like the biggest possible circumference of the globe so um yeah that's really interesting and I am enjoying that book it's just taking me I think this is probably my second or third month of listening to it because I don't listen to it very often but I'm probably more into it now again because I listened to it the whole way down to Cork which is you know about three and a half hours drive so I got plenty in it that way so um yeah that's great so circle um i'm really enjoying that as well um but my priority today probably will be the physical books so i'm hoping to read at least some of this non-fiction book um which is a biography of michael collins by tim pat coogan it's a very well-known biography the reason i'm reading this is it's the 100th anniversary of uh, michael collins being killed on the 21st of august and uh he actually was from and was killed very close to where I am at the moment. I am very interested in Irish history as well, even if that's not always apparent on this channel. The years 1920 to 1922 were really, really important for, 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 for Irish history. Unfortunately, due to the extremely bad timing of COVID, um, I didn't get to attend a lot of in-person commemoration events. So I'm just really excited that we can go to talks for the Michael Collins centenary with no restrictions. So I'm actually spending part of this week in Cork and coming down again next weekend to uh to go to some of the talks and events around that michael collins is like a legend of irish history he's kind of widely regarded as having won the war of independence like which is obviously an oversimplification like wasn't won by any one person but um uh, michael collins like fought in the gpo in 1916 he was interned in frongoch in wales like you know afterwards when he was released from prison he very much became um, prominent in Sinn Féin both on like the political side but also of course most famously on the military side. Um, after the War of Independence he was under in chief of the newly formed Free State Army and was obviously involved in the pro-treaty side which he was, he was very sadly killed at the age of 31 by anti-treaty forces. To be honest if you want to know about Michael Collins the first place I'd point you is the, is the Liam Neeson film because like it's a really good film and it really does hit like the very broad strokes of his life and of modern Irish history. So I'd really recommend that film and I do enjoy it and I'm sure many, many people will be watching it this week. The first volume, what really struck me was just like everybody remembers his ability as a military man, um, but just his organisational skills, his ability to lead and overall like everything that's said about him is his overwhelming capacity for work. It's definitely one that's really interesting to read about. I think I'd lead, like to read about four chapters of this today. So the first volume covered up to 1920, which is really the arrival of the Black and Tans and Auxiliaries to Ireland. And this volume obviously will cover um, the end of the War of Independence, the Anglo-Irish Treaty negotiations and um, his death in the aftermath, I suppose. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Anglo-Irish Treaty's action as that's always something I've been really interested in. Long story short, um, Michael Collins' biography, part two, probably about four chapters. So the final two books I want to talk about really, um, so they're actually both new releases that I picked them up yesterday. I know I have so many books to read already, but I couldn't resist them. Um, so I went into Clonacilty to the bookshop there because I wanted to buy Hamnet. I'm reading in a small group um, hosted by Alice and Giant Bookshelf. In September, I wanted to pick up a copy, but of course it's very hard to 
go into a bookshop and not see anything else. And, uh, it's a lovely little small independent bookshop in Clonakilty, so I wanted to support them as well. And uh, sure, you, when you see these two books, you'll understand why I couldn't leave them down. I don't know whether I'll get to these, but if I do manage to get, I've never kind of monitored how much I get read in like a 12 hour period before, but if I do get to them, uh, if I do get to them, they are the the Night Shift by Jess Cage and uh, Haven by Emma Donahue. I didn't even know that there was a new Emma Donahue book coming out, so I just had to pick up this one. Um, it's set in the fifth. It's set in seventh century Ireland. Um, it's set in seventh century Ireland and seems to be about the fine founding of the monastery in Gaelic Michael, which you know again. <laughs> I'll probably want to go to Skellig Michael now after reading this, but uh, that's in County Kerry, which is the neighbouring co county to where I am in uh, County Cork. So, uh, yeah, I'm really intrigued with that one. I saw this little boat. I saw it was by Emma Donahue. who was like, yeah, on brand. These even match. Like, you know, I had to get the two of them. And this is probably even more on brand, uh, The Night Ship by Jess Cade. I've never read any Jess Cade before, but there was a story in The Haunting Season, um, which I read earlier this year that I really liked. I don't really know anything about this book, but the kind of line at the back says one shipwreck, two misfits, three centuries apart. I mean, a shipwreck, there's a ship on the cover. The first the first storyline, it's kind of a dual timeline story. First is set in sixteen twenty eight and the second in nineteen eighty nine, like sign me up. Um at the moment I'm not sure which of those two books I'll read. I do think Haven is more of a kind of summary read and it is promised nice today so I might go with Haven but we'll see. Yeah it's actually I've spent way too long rambling and it's after 10 o'clock now so uh yeah I'll just have breakfast I'd say and get reading and I'll check in in a while. So I'm starting off with Vanity Fair and tea. It's definitely way too warm for tea definitely for drinking tea outside hence why I'm starting inside but uh yeah I can't break myself with the habit to have to have tea in the morning. Amelia is too good for this world, really. I do really like her, I have to say. And poor Jobin. So it's now just half one, and I've just uh, I've just gotten to page two hundred fifty of Vanity Fair. Um, which I'm still really, really enjoying. It was a good place to stop because I think we're just moving geographically to uh, to somewhere else. So it was just a good place to finish off for the day, I think. But um, yeah, just like all the characters, all the side characters. But also um, what I really enjoyed the section that I read, um, the interaction between uh, parents and their sons and daughters, especially George and his father. So uh, not much changes in 200 years like... Uh, when he's been told, when you live in my house, I'm the master and you still have to do this. It definitely sounds familiar from my younger days. Yeah, like just the way that Amelia and um, or Becky are like dealing with their the, the, the paths their lives have taken. Um, yeah, I can't really say much because of spoilers, but I'm still really, really enjoying it. I might come back to it later, but maybe not. I've got a lot more I want to read as well. So yeah, a bit of lunch, I think now. Uh, so it's now half three and I'm still outside as you can see the temperature has dropped a little bit so it's much more kind of comfortable 28. I listened to a bit of Great Circle while I was having my lunch and I actually am more than halfway through I, thought, uh, I said that an hour earlier without giving any spoilers. I'm in the 1940s and that section I'm finding really really interesting Um, the things that the characters are doing so uh, yeah. But I'll probably listen to more of that later. But at the moment, I'm I started Michael Collins, so I'm thirty six pages in. Uh, just uh, kind of covered uh, Bloody Sunday and kind of the uh, intelligence operations around that. And like, <laughs> this is the reason I suppose everybody just loves spy stories. It's always unbelievable when you read about those things. And uh, yeah, Lloyd George has just uh, suggested peace, so I'm getting into, I suppose, more of the political side of the book anyways. So um, yeah, really enjoyed it. I'll probably read another chapter of this before I swap to Gingerbread, probably. <laughs> I just go for a walk. <laughs> you are, of course. Uh, 
Uh, so it's now half past six and I'm just back from my walk, which is lovely. Do you know, it's kind of been too hot really to bring dogs for walks the last day or two. So um, it was nice to get out. Um, I was listening to Great Circle and the sad thing happened. Just, you know, I suppose it was inevitable. All the characters were a bit too happy for the time they were in. But uh, yeah, sure. No, it was, I still didn't really see it coming. So I'm just here now with a cup of tea and I'm settling in to read gingerbread. Um, so I think I should get that finished in about four hours left. So yeah, I should be able to get gingerbread finished and maybe start one of the other ones. So I'm not even doing it on purpose, but I always seem to check in about the half hour mark. Um, it's now half seven and I'm sorry to say that I am uh, DNFing gingerbread. Um, I don't DNF very often, but... Um, I think I will start to do it more because like just the volume of books that are out there that I would like to read and I just wasn't getting anything out of this book. Um, I was most interested, as I said, daughter Perdita and kind of the troubles she was having. And then when it kind of started going away from that into kind of the more magical, I hesitate, it's not really defined. So I don't even know if it's magical when it went into kind of the dead land. Um, I can't, I can never think of it. Drew Hastrana, I just... I just wasn't interested and there was so many different characters that came and went um i can see you know there is something trying to be done about like fairy tales and i'm sure it's a very good book i've heard about it a good bit on booktube but it's just not for me and it probably says more bad things about me than about the book that i uh do you know i've obviously just lost my taste for more uh, fantasy elements in my books so um yeah, DNFing this, and I did decide in the end that I'm going to start uh, Emma Donoghue's Haven, so I'm really, really excited about this one, and that maybe that was a contributing factor to me, uh, to me uh, the DNFing Gingerbread as well, I wanted to get stuck into this one, so um, yeah, but in all honesty, I, I just, I just, I wasn't enjoying Gingerbread, so that'll be going back to the library, and I'm thankful I didn't buy it. So this is the last check-in of this reading vlog. It's now half ten, so I've been reading for 12 hours, more or less straight. I really enjoyed the exp this experiment. I've never read kind of like with that much of a focus on just reading for a day before and to see how much I was able to get read was interesting. So since I last checked in, I read a little bit more of Michael Collins and my but my main focus has been making a start on Haven by Emma Donoghue, which I'm absolutely loving. So this book takes place in Ireland in the 5th century. It starts off with Clan McNoise when this um, this kind of travelling monk has arrived. He, he gets a vision that he should found a monastery in a remote island. It's clear from the blurb and from the picture in, in the front that that's actually Skellig Michael, which is off the coast of Kerry. Um, it's probably most well known to people nowadays as it was in uh, Star Wars in The Force, in the Force Awakens. It's where, uh, it's where Luke retreats to. Um, it, it, it's that, it, it, that that was the filming location for that the the island was the filming location for that it's such a contrast really to the two previous Emma, Emma Donoghue books that I've read The Wonder and The Pull of the Stars which are very much like focused on women whereas this obviously being um about monks um is focused on men um but it, it does have the same traits of being focused on like a very small group of characters um yeah and like I'm on page, I'm on page 99 and like, you know, it's a very slow moving book, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And like all the details of birds and things. I don't know an awful lot about birds, so I do, I do find myself having to look them up. But um, yeah, can't wait to continue this. It's a pity it's Sunday, but um, I'll definitely, I, I'd say I'll finish this tomorrow. Um, so for all that it's slow paced, it's really fast read because I'm enjoying it so much. Um, so just to sum up, I suppose, what I did read today, I didn't finish any books. I think like, although I really enjoyed today and I didn't like choose this reading material specifically for this reading vlog, I think it possibly would have been more, more satisfying to read lots of small books rather than parts of big ones. But sure, you live and learn. Um, and like I did make progress in the things I'm currently reading. So I didn't finish any. I read parts of three physical books and one uh, audio book, uh, Great Circle. But I DNF'd one. So in terms of how much I got through, um, so Vanity Fair, as I said, I read 100 pages. <laughs> I, I didn't even I, I knew I wanted to read 100 pages of Vanity Fair but the others were accidental um Vanity Fair 100 pages um Haven 99 pages um Michael Collins 110 pages and 
gingerbread about 90 pages so um yeah around about the 100 page mark for all of the physical books and great circle i listened to a little under three hours um do you know most of that at double speed or 1.5 speed um depending on the narration so i'm really enjoying that as well so um yeah obviously really enjoyable day pity about gingerbread the one kind of hiccup i suppose in all of the good books i've been reading so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you had a nice weekend and it wasn't too hot where you were Thanks for listening, thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday for my next video.